welcome to another Super Home 59 video. This one's all about cleaning a biomass boiler. So first thing I'm going to do, this is a KWB Easy Fire boiler. I'm going to switch it off. Quite simply done at the control panel. So once I find the plant on off function, I simply hit set, toggle to off and click set. Next we lift the lid. This is the top of the boiler. Inside there's a nice big pad of insulation. We'll remove that and that will reveal the top of the boiler. To remove the top of the uh, boiler there's a large um, plate and I simply use an Allen key that comes with the boiler and I simply loosen the bolts. I don't have to remove them completely, I just have to loosen them and the entire upper pan here will just twist off. I just twist the plate around and I just lift it out. Next, let's remove this box here which contains the ash. I simply unclip it from the boiler, the clasps on either side, and I just put it away. Now, it has a little hole here, just about to see it, where the ash goes in with an auger screw. I just simply pop this cap over it so it doesn't come out handle comes out and then wheel that away okay so we'll leave that to one side for the time being because we're going to use that to put the ash in and you see here this is where the ash is coming out of a little auger screw it's automatic automatically feeding there so there's plenty of ash in this um, burn chamber for us to clear out so I'm going to open that up just pull the handle and there we are. As you can see, filthy dirty, but it's all ash. Very easy to vacuum out. And here you see the burn chamber, absolutely filthy. At the top of the picture, there is the burn plate itself. At the bottom, there's an arrangement, if I move the light, you can see that sweeps the ash into the auger chamber, and therefore the auger just moves the ash out. As you can see, after a year, it piles up quite a bit. So here we are, back on the top of the boiler. It's a little bit warm from this morning's burn, covered in ash. Now this plate with the handle, I can lift that straight off, it's not bolted down. Before I do that, I need to do a bit of a hoover round. Once it is uh, reasonably clean, Simply lift the top off, can gently, and there it is like, quite dirty on top, easy to brush off and vacuum as we'll do in a minute. Now this is the point where you need lots of light. Okay, so I've got actually an old broken lamp here that I can just rest on top of the, um, the pellet silo and shine right down into the boiler. So if I position that, you can see a bit better what we're dealing with. So now we are looking right down into the uh, beast itself. What you can see around the edge, look at my finger, these holes with the springs in them, those springs go up and down as a self-cleaning mechanism so the hot air exhaust gases will actually go up these pipes here and obviously this is a water jacket around the edge here all sealed in. If you look down into the middle here, you see this annular ring, as I'm pointing out here, is effectively um, a buffer that allows the air to recirculate and all the exhaust gases to be burnt. Now if we look right at the bottom, if you can just about see that grey circle there, that's actually the burn plate itself, and the grey circle is the unburnt ash on top of it. So the next thing to do is to do a bit more vacuuming down there, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll lift that burn can out. Right, we've cleaned up a little bit. Let's see if we can remove this burn can out. It just lifts out, it's not attached in any respect, it's just held in place by gravity. Maneuver it past this mechanism. Awkward, there you go. A shower of dust. And there you can see the burn can itself. Look closely, you can see little 
jets, apparently inside like a jet aircraft afterburner. That blows extra air into the exhaust stream, ensuring full combustion of all the fuel. What we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the bottom, get a bit dirty in the burn chamber at the bottom. So here we are on the floor of the garage. Now you have to accept if you're going to clean the boiler out, you're going to get dirty. So put your dirty clothes on and put something comfortable on the floor, some foam sponge, some toweling, some old sacking, something. You're going to be down here for about 10 minutes, so get yourself comfortable. So arm yourself with a vacuum cleaner and a soft brush and we'll clean a little bit around the entrance area. Inside here there's an awful lot of accumulated ash. That I'm not going to vacuum up, that I'm going to scoop into the um, container here that we saw earlier. Now only so much of the dust and dirt can be removed with the vacuum cleaner, so once you've gone around the vacuum cleaner Take a stiff brush and brush everything down. That will dislodge quite a lot of dust and then go around again with the vacuum cleaner to um, tidy up everything you've dislodged. Once that's down, grab yourself a little scoop. The scoop is basically half a milk bottle. And scoop up all that stuff inside there and dump it into the box here. This, I admit, is probably the most uncomfortable thing to do with a boiler because actually it's quite difficult to get inside there and if the boiler is a bit warm it can be quite sticky. Um, but persevere we must. Good thing you've got plenty of light. Now that light I was showing you earlier is shining right down from the middle of the boiler so we've got plenty of light here now. I'm going to say don't try and do this without that light because you'll be working in the dark. As you can see, there's an awful lot of ash in here. It doesn't do the boiler any harm particularly, but we want to get it all out. Okay, that's the uh, clearing out of most of the ash at the bottom here. We'll vacuum that up later. What we're going to do now, we're going to go right into the burn chamber. Look at this burn plate here, and we're going to remove that. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so there's the burn plate. It's covered, as you can see, in dust. And if you look up above it, there's like the chimney with light shining down. That's the centre of the boiler drum. These pipes, by the way, coming off here, that's where the air is injected into the burn plate to give a complete burn. And there's a couple of those there, so they will inject air right up to the centre of the plate. And the pipe you can just about to see here is the auger from the silo that's bringing in the fuel. Okay, as you can see, it's extremely dirty. So I'm going to brush all that off and then I'm going to remove that. See this screw here? I'm going to unscrew that and just lift the blown plate off. And there you see the burn plate. Okay, little fine holes around the edge is where the air comes through to um, complete the full combustion. Now this is the only part of the mechanism that gets really, really hot in a way that it actually gets clinker. So you see here, we have clinker. You do, do get clinker on a biomass boiler. That's the only place you see it and that will have to be knocked off with a hammer and chisel. Now, pointing the video camera right down the, from the top of the boiler just to show you the sort of activities we're doing here um, we are forcing out the clinker and the screwdriver ok so here's the burn chamber after a good thorough clean sweep and hoovering as you can see good as new Everything exceptionally clean. So, having cleaned out the actual boiler itself, we have some paraphernalia to be cleaned. Firstly, that burn plate, there it is. You have to remove the clinker from that, a brush and hoover. And then we have this, what I call the afterburner can here, the top of the boiler here, 
and the boiler cap there, all of which don't have clinker, they just need to be brushed and vacuumed. So a relatively quick job, apart from getting the clinker off this burn plate. So getting clinker off a burn plate, just an old screwdriver. And whack it. As you can see, the clinker just flies off. And there you go, all clean. And the thing I have to do now is to put it all back together again. Now the positioning of this after burning can is critical because you have to line up the uh, this air pipe here with the inject air pipe it's just over the burn plate. So you have to put it in a slight twisting motion and then twist it back again. And there you go. Just make sure air in that pipe has slid over and then it just rests with gravity against the side of the burn chamber. Next up, oh, the cap, which is held in place by gravity. Just pop it in place, there you go, and finally the lid, which is one of the heaviest pieces of the entire boiler that you would ever need to pick up. Carefully position it and twist, and there you go. Take the spanner, hexagonal, skirt and key, and tighten. Right, when that's good and tight, there's a small lubrication job just down the side of the boiler. Where I'm pointing here, which I'll show you in a second, um, there's a small cam there that operates the self clean mechanism. So I'll take some three in one oil. They recommend actual grease, but because you can't actually physically get your finger in there, it's impossible to use actual grease. So I just dribble a little bit of three in one oil over that cam that's there and that really is it. Next we put in the insulation cap on top. And drop the lid down. And that's it, job done. Now there's one other mechanism underneath the silo that in theory requires inspection. It's a safety flap. Unfortunately, the way this has been built, it's actually impossible to reach that part of the mechanism. Um, so we don't do that part and we just hope it works. <coughs> you can hear it, the boy is coming on, so it's working. One final thing to say is of course, this is awful lot of effort. It's very, very dirty. And if you don't want to do it, about 500 pounds a year, professional will come and do it for you. And it's only taken us really a couple of hours on a Saturday morning when it's quiet. Come and visit the house next time you buy in High Wycombe and remember you too can conquer your house. Bye bye.